This is Our People Podcast, telling the stories behind South Tyneside and Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Our People Podcast. My name's Lauren Robinson and I'm a Communications Manager here at the Trust. Um, we're actually in the middle of a pretty busy day here as we are recording this episode of the podcast at our Nursing and Midwifery Excellence Conference. So yes, it's been a pretty busy day. Today we'll be talking all about our Nursing and Midwifery Excellence Programme. Um, the aim of the programme is to help us achieve Pathway to Excellence accreditation. Now, Pathway to Excellence is a framework created by the American Nurses Credentialing Centre, also known as the ANCC. So we'll be talking to colleagues from Coventry and Northampton Trusts to see how they achieved Pathway to Excellence. And I'm really pleased that they've joined me today. So today I'm joined by um, Emily Lambert, who is Lead Nurse for Pathway to Excellence at Northampton General Hospital. Also joined by Sarah Quaffe, who is Shared Decision Making Facilitator at Northampton General Hospital. And we are also joined by Lisa Dunn, who is Pathway to Excellence Facilitator Lead at University Hospitals Coventry and Warwickshire. So thank you everybody for driving up and joining us at our conference. Um, thank you. We're also joined as well by Sharon McDowell, who is our Assistant Director of Nursing and is the lead for our Nursing and Midwifery Excellence Programme. So Sharon, if you just want to explain a little bit for people listening, what is Pathway to Excellence? What is Nursing and Midwifery Excellence and why is it important? Okay, thank you. Um, Pathway to Excellence is... Um, an accreditation program that's um, developed by the American Nurses Credentialing Centre. And we at South Tyneside and Sunderland Foundation Trust were one of 14 trusts selected by the Chief Nursing Officer for England and NHS England to participate in this program. Pathway to Excellence program is based around six standards. They are shared decision-making, leadership, safety, quality, well-being, and professional development. But essentially the programme is about supporting our nurses and midwives to feel valued, to feel that they have a voice, that they are listened to and can participate in decision making, that they can influence um, decision making within the organisation and essentially then creating an environment in which our nurses are working in a positive culture that supports them to do those things. Um, why is it um, essential or why is it good for us to be following this programme in, ter in terms of our nursing and midwifery excellence um, vision? The Pathway to Excellence programme will is a framework that will support us to achieve our nursing and midwifery excellence vision and ultimately that is about um, supporting our nurses and midwives and I must say at this point, it also includes our allied health professionals, our healthcare assistants, our theatre support workers, and creating an environment where our nurses feel comfortable, content, happy, they want to work for our organisation, and ultimately from that, our patient care outcomes will improve. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, so obviously it's an American framework. So how does that fit from a UK point of view or from an NHS point of view? Um, so although the framework is designed and started out in America, the framework's now applied across the world. And um, I think when you look at the issues we face as nurses internationally, the issues are very much the same. So we have the same workforce issues around recruitment and retention. And when you look at our nurses and research around what's important to nurses, that's the same internationally. So the six standards are still highly relevant, even though some of the terminology used in the document may be geared towards an American system. Actually, the principles of it really fit with any organisation across the world. And also, it's worth saying that there's actually no framework in the UK. So this is the only framework that exists of its kind in the world at the moment. So that's why we're choosing to use this framework. Emily and Sarah, Northampton has already achieved accreditation, Pathway to Excellence accreditation. So when did you start that journey and how long did it take you? 
Um, so our journey started back in around 2015 when Carolyn Fox, our then Director of Nursing and Midwifery, um, came to our organisation and really realised there was a sense of apathy amongst our nurses and that they didn't really have the strong professional voice she wanted for them. So we formally um, expressed our intent of achieving Pathway to Excellence designation in 2016 at the beginning of the year and we later achieved the designation in September 2018. So. Obviously, on your journey, what were some or if any of the challenges that you faced while you were going through that process? So I think for us being a designated organisation, COVID was a challenge we faced in the sense that COVID took away everything we knew, the way we'd done pathway. So our pathway journey was very much about connecting in person together and COVID stripped that from us a little bit. But I think actually what it also gave us was a framework to give something back to the staff. We recognised that very early on that this was our COVID lifeline, those staff had given so much to us and it was an opportunity for us to give something back to them because why would we not want these staff who'd just given everything to us through the pandemic to stay at our organisation and have the tools to flourish and succeed? So Lisa, your trust achieved accreditation during COVID. So can you just explain a little bit more about that? Because obviously we all know how challenging it was, how challenging it was during that time and how did you maintain that momentum? So yeah, we started off on our Pathway to Excellence journey towards the end of um, 2019, just pr prior to the pandemic, uh, the first wave of the pandemic starting. Um, so uh, faced sort of challenges similar to everybody else really in terms of that, that initial response. Um, we took a sort of conscious effort really to um, utilise the pathway framework to help us with our pandemic response because I think if anything the pan pandemic highlighted the importance of um, things like the wellbeing standard within the framework and how that really brought to the fore the importance of, of wellbeing for our nurses, our midwives and our multi-professional colleagues as well. And so we very much used that as a, a mechanism to bring that to the fore really. And I think when you are developing things at pace and lots of things changed very rapidly during the pandemic, I think the importance of bringing your frontline staff on board with those changes um, is a much better way of making changes, involving them with it rather than having change done to them. Mm -hmm. um, so shared decision making was definitely a, a real benefit and, a, and like Emily says, a lifeline really during those, those difficult times. So Sarah, you are shared decision making facilitator. So what type of um, councils do you have at Northampton? Well, we've got about 30 councils at Northampton General Hospital, mainly ward-based councils. So a ward-based council is a group of staff who work together on a ward. So the council would be made up of nurses, um, healthcare assistants often, the ward clerk will, will be involved. Therapists are often included as well. And we have one council at Northampton where um, a doctor is gonna join the council. So it really is representative of the area. Um, we have other councils, so we have themed councils and speciality councils, which are specific roles such as healthcare assistants have a council, uh, practice development has a council, and then we have other councils like our research council, which brings staff from any role within the hospital. And how do you support staff to attend shared decision making councils? So how do you give how do, you, how do you give the staff time to participate in these councils? So it's, it's really important that each council can negotiate their way into having allocated time. And it's hard, we know, with staffing presently. I think each council, the chairperson will often discuss with their manager and the ward manager or the area manager, how can we make this work? And our council seem to find a way many different varieties of um, putting this on the roster or allocating time off or it might be the matron covering the area for a half hour while the council meets so i think finding a way that's specific to each council is the best way and how do you motivate people to participate like how do you get them i suppose excited about you know making some real meaningful change 
So I, w- I am a midwife. I've worked at Northampton as a midwife for 10 years. And what I, what I find with nurses and midwives and other, our other AHP colleagues is they are full of ideas. They're full of really good ideas. Every day, direct care nurses and midwives have ideas about improving patient care, improving things for colleagues. And this, the means of shared decision making is the way of getting the ideas turned into action. Mm -hmm. So I would say shared decision making is ideas plus action. Um, And most of our staff are really keen on making those ideas come to life. So I've never met a midwife or a nurse who hasn't had a good idea about improvements. This is the way that they can really bring that to life. The other way we engage with our staff is we celebrate a lot at Northampton. So we celebrate excellence. We've been on this pathway for four years now, and we really want to shout about what our teams do, what they've done during COVID and what they continue to do with the challenges. So we celebrate a lot. We celebrate small successes. We celebrate big successes. And I think it brings us all together as a team and we feel united in the challenges that we face. And I suppose as well, a lot of, um, a lot of teams are probably already doing a lot of excellent work across the organisation. Is it just around capturing that, that work that's already going on? Yeah, it is. So Path, Pathway to Excellence really shines a light on what's already occurring. It's not extra work to do for nurses or midwives. It's not extra um, things you have to perform to show that you're on a Pathway to Excellence. It's probably many things in your organisation that you already do. Pathway shines a light on that, on the things that you do well, and it gives you a really good reason to celebrate what you're already doing and it helps you build and fill in the gaps of of the other things that you need to do for the six standards. Um, I think as Sarah's just described, it's really important to remember that uh, we focus sometimes on the narrative of what we've just gone through with the pandemic, but in, in my role, which I've been in since April, I have the opportunity to meet with Um, many of our nurses and uh, midwives and AHPs and I think it's really significant that Sarah said that despite what we've gone through we've got a lot of our staff who are very motivated they want to see change and they're looking for a new narrative I think the fact that we've got 150 people here today we have a room full of motivated people who want to do something different so I think we need it's our role as leads for this program to support our staff in in, in the way forward. Um, And I think one of the things we always talk about at Northampton is about being pathway proud and I think pathway to excellence gives you the platform to be really proud of what you do. I think it's really important to remember we don't do things to get pathway, we're pathway because of the amazing things we do and you'll have those examples across your organisation every day. So when when you achieve accreditation as a trust, what does that mean for the organisation? What impact have you seen at your trusts and on your patients and on your staff? So for us at um, university hospitals, um, we've seen a, a huge a huge increase in sort of staff morale, really, I would say, and, and in empowerment of staff. And I think um, we've not long gone through our pathway survey we did that in June, July of this year, just before we got our designation in August. Um, and just to see the will with which everybody had to just share and have fun and celebrate what they were doing that was excellent in their, their areas throughout the survey um, has been absolutely phenomenal, really, to, to see that in people. Um, and I think Parthory has other benefits as well in terms of you know, if you've got happy nurses, then you've got happy patients, you know, your patient outcomes improve, um, happy doctors as well. But our, and, um, and our vacancy rates are the best that they've been um, at the organisation um, now that we've got our pathway designation. I think as well, when you have pathway designation, sometimes when you walk into your organisation, you will see a member of staff and you can just see pathway is alive. So. I think of like our shared decision making chairs and you see them developing as leaders and you see the pathway standards come to life. But I think the same goes for 
our patients as well. When you see a patient, so for example, on our neonatal unit, they did a huge project which renovated the breastfeeding room for mums. Well, when you see a mum and you hear a story of that mum who's had a positive difference because of something someone's done because of Pathway, that's an amazing achievement of feeling and then that pride really resonates around the organisation. And has been accredited, and I suppose probably just to, actually just touching on what you've just said there, has it made a difference to morale in terms of obviously staff morale and also what changes have been made, if any, to like clinical practice? So I think it's definitely made a difference on morale. I think our nurses have the loudest professional voice in our organisation now and they're an formidable force. Um, and I think without Pathway, we would have never empowered them in such a way. We really encourage our shared decision-making councils at Northampton to take part in, in patient projects. So sometimes a small project will have a big impact for patients. So like Emily said, there's the breastfeeding room, there's the diary for parents when their babies are in the neonatal unit and have to be separated. Some of these things are small projects run by councils have a huge impact for patients and we really support the councils to focus on either projects for the staff, projects for the patients or projects for the ward areas. What are, for obviously everyone, what are any of the barriers I suppose that you have faced during your whole pathway journey? Um, so I think sometimes the fact the terminology is geared towards maybe American organisations can be a bit of a barrier. Um, I think it's just about taking the time to understand the language used and in the documents and actually what is the equivalent of that because it's not that we don't have it in the UK, it's just that we call it something different. So for example, at our organisation, we don't have a chief nurse, we have a director of nursing. So when we were talking to people about the CNO, they thought we went, meant Ruth May. So actually it's just about doing that education piece with staff around how does this translate to our organisation. Um, right. I think one of the things that I, I would say in, in terms of a, a challenge and, and overcoming that re really is just spending that time of helping staff to understand the pathway framework in that it's, it's not a new piece of work, it's not extra work that you have to do, it's just helping people to understand that it's about celebrating the excellence that you've already got in place mm -hmm. and I think just spending that time to sort of help people work that through um, is, is really beneficial. I'd say as well, um, another challenge is the fact sometimes people get a bit um, fixated on the fact the survey is only for nurses, but I'd say Pathway is for everyone. The principles of Pathway make a good environment for everyone. Yes, only nurses can take the survey, but that's not to say we exclude other people. It just means we're getting the accreditation for the nurses' involvement in it. I think um, we recognise that there will be some challenges on our journey at South Tyneside and Sunderland. I think the benefit that um, we have as an organisation is the fact that we can tap into the experience of other organisations who've gone through this. Um, we have a really good peer support network across the UK um, where well before today I was communicating with Emily, Lisa and Sarah and other pathway leads across the country. Um, we've now had the opportunity to meet face to face and um, and, and learn from their experiences. I know that support will always be there, but we've got, I think I mentioned earlier, we've got to change the narrative. We've got to give some hope um, and um, something to look forward to. I think when we were at the conference in Philadelphia, one of the um, keynote speakers or motivational speakers talked about imagining that you're in a car and you've got the steering wheel and that you need to look forward through the windscreen not look back through the rear view mirror and I think whilst we've got lessons to learn from everything that's happened particularly over the last two years we've now got to look forward but I think Pathway to Excellence I think as, as the three um, guests have just described is a vehicle it's a framework that gives us something to, to hang on to and to help us move forward with that. And I think that's in terms of the significance of pathway post of pathway to excellence post pandemic. I suppose you've kind of touched on that there around looking forward and not looking backwards. It's I think because the challenge is going to be there for a long time. Um, 
it's not going to change. I think Ken said in his address um, this morning that we're not looking through rose coloured glasses. We know that it's still going to be tough. But what do we do? Do we just, and I think it might have been Emily who said this in our presentation, do we just keep on doing what we're always doing but not change anything? Something's got to change to make life better for our staff within the organisation and I really do believe that the pathway to excellence is that framework. And again, Carolyn Fox in her um, presentation this morning very much talked about that, that what else have we got? Emily's just said we haven't got a UK framework. Um, we haven't got anything else, so this is something that really is essential to move forward. And I think one of the really good things about Pathway is it recognises that nursing evolves. So every four years they update the standards, they update the manual, like they recognise the evolution of nursing. So it doesn't just stop when you get designation. This is about that constant process of our nurses being the best they can be and who wouldn't want their nurses to be at the top of their game. So how do you know obviously you are or you your two organisations are both Pathway accredited. So how do you know that you are truly living pathway to excellence how do you know is it the you know when you walk in is it a feeling is it a morale thing is it a, can you just feel it when you're talking to staff are staff really engaged like what is it i think for me it's when you like look at a member of staff and you just see those standards come alive so um, i often share the story of jane one of our shared decision making chairs and she's a shared decision making chair she used that to really excel her leadership career and now she's on a regional leadership program She's the chair of the International Council, so she's made a psychologically safe space for our international nurses. She's made them have a quality experience when they arrive at the Trust. She recognised they had wellbeing needs and she went on to do a PNA course. She's developed a course for their professional development. And I think it's just when you look around your organisation and there are like many stories where you can see those values come alive in your staff, you know it's because you really live in pathway. Yeah, we know a lot of our shared decision making councils, they're victims of their own success in that we often have to find new chair people because <laughs> the chairs do really well and they do develop and that's exactly what we want to happen. Um, I would just really say, you know, this is the start of a journey for your organisation and it's a really exciting journey. So just embrace it, make the most of it. Like, your organisation want to do something for you as a nursing body and that's really special so just seize the moment and make the best of it you can. And although we were the first UK Trust to receive the designation Pathway to Excellence at Northampton, we're really proud of South Tyneside and Sunderland Foundation Trust for following us on the journey and looking forward to supporting you in any way you need us. Pathway to Excellence is like high on the Chief Nursing Officer's agenda for England. This isn't one trust doing something in isolation, this is about us being a collective Pathway family across the UK and really sharing pockets of good practice between our trusts. If anyone wants to get involved in our, because obviously we are, you know, our framework, I suppose we've branded as Nursing and Midwifery Excellence, which is our way of um, delivering the Pathway to Excellence um, framework and standards. How do our staff get involved in Nursing and Midwifery Excellence? What sort of things can they do? How can staff get involved? Um, today at the conference, this is the first step where people have actually attended the conference and um, they're starting to learn about the pathway to excellence and how that will contribute to our nursing and midwifery excellence um, vision. Um, people can sign up to be pathway advocates. We've put um, documents out on the tables at the conference today to ask people to sign up. Um, that is people who I will work with to develop their knowledge and understanding of the Pathway programme and really we want what we want is for them to be champions in their workplace and help share the vision um, with their clinical teams. Um, I think we also heard and I know I recognise from the ladies around the table that they haven't done this on their own, they've got teams supporting them. So at some point we will be discussing with our Director of Nursing what that team might look like for us in South Tyneside and Sunderland. Currently, um, we have me and, uh, and obviously I've been well supported by you, Lauren. Um, but we do need other people to be on the team, but we're at a very early stage, so we will be looking at that. And I think Lisa talked about some of the, the roles that we'll be looking at as people to help with writing some of the, some of the evidence that we're going to need for this programme. 
So I will be looking for lots of people to support to support us. But at the minute, I think mainly looking for some advocates for the program who we will support to understand the program better. Getting some more shared decision making councils um, established. Um, and through that, I'm more than happy to go around and talk to departments, um, wards, and support them and how they can move forward with shared decision making. Okay, great. And I think as well, just to add, just for um, everyone listening, we'll add all the information on the staff in Renet, so you should be able, all the contact information for Sharon will be on there and all the information around advocates will be on there if you want to go and have a look. But um, I think that's great and thank you everyone for joining with today and thank you for driving up to our conference and spending the day with us. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank, you. Having us. thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Our People Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it and check out our other stories. Hit subscribe to keep up with the latest and catch up with what we've been up to on our Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages. Just search for our name.